In the first part of this series, which means this video, I'm going to talk about all the tools you need for making a violin, what they do, what you should buy, and what's optional. In the description below, you will find a list of tools with names and brands. Most of them are the exact tools that I use, or else it's only because I cannot find them online, or maybe I find a better deal. If you start with nothing, the list may seem long and expensive, but with the exception of some of the items, most of the tools are actually very affordable. Most of them are very valuable woodworking tools, and some of them can even last you a lifetime. So it would be a good investment even for hobbyists, at least that's what I keep telling myself. Also, I like to modify commercial tools and even make my own tools that will do the job just as well. And I will make videos to show you how to make and modify tools later. So don't worry, you don't have to sell your organs or trade your soul to make violins. Let's start with something you're familiar with to boost up your self-esteem. You will need pencils, erasers, and a drawing compass. The pencils I use are around 2B to 4B, just something dark enough that allows you to see clearly, but not too dark that will make your work messy. You will need measuring tools, including a regular small measuring tape, at least two metallic rulers with 150mm, and a longer one with at least 400mm. And also a digital caliber, there are plastic ones and metallic ones. If you only want to focus on making, you can get the metallic one. But if you're going to work on finished instruments, bows, or even restoring later, also get a plastic one, because the metallic ones can scratch things easily. You will need a square to check the squareness of your work. I have three squares, and I like to use the small one very much. But if you can only get one, get a larger, sharp edge one. You will need a thickness caliber. There are regular ones, and ones that are specially made for violin making. Both are okay, just make sure the throw is steep enough for the plates to get in. You will need this soft triangle ruler when working on the apples. A bowl for water and a brush for that. There will be some steps you can add water onto the wood to make the job easier, and it would be better if you can do it without getting your hands wet. Because wet hands rust tools, and you can't really grab things in your hands when they're wet. A woodworker vise with 8 inch or 9 inch, get a bigger one if you plan to work on cellos or something even bigger later. I also have a small stand device that can rotate almost 180 degrees. It helps me a lot when working on the ribs and the scroll, and is extremely helpful when I'm making this series of video. It is one of my favorites, but it's optional. You will need at least two big F clamps that is long enough to clamp your piece and the bench together, but not too long that will scratch your legs. And at least 6 to 8 smaller clamps, I use a lot of them when working on the ribs because of the method that I use, and that's the only way that makes me feel secure, I just cannot help it. You will also need some small G clamps with deep throw for gluing the base bar, those I'm using are specially made for volley making, but any kind of clamps with a deep enough throw will do, and it would be nice if you can find some that are light and thin. You will need around 64 of these clamps when gluing the linings. I make mine with ordinary laundry bamboo clamps with the tips cut off and rubber band on. Regular plastic ones are fine too, just make sure the lips are flat enough for you to clamp in. You will also need a bench hook if you need to keep your dining table in a good shape. Mine is just a chopping board from IKEA, but any kind of wood board that is big enough for you to put a filing body on will do. And it would be nice if you can also find some wood piece to protect the sign of your bench. If you want to give your hands a better protection, you will also need a pair of gloves. The glove I use is made of Kevlar. People use it for ballistic body armors and shark nets. And also, Batman use it for his suit and cape. So I think it will be okay for a small knife cut. Also, you can wear the 3M work gloves when using the gouges and when sharpening packs or end buttons, but you can say they are optional. In addition, you will need a pointed tweezer and a slant tweezer. The pointed one is for holding tiny objects such as a broken corner, and the slant one is for taking out spikes if you unfortunately got them in your hands. But actually, it's not that easy to get spikes from the wood we use for making violins. Your real enemy is plywood. But do keep the tweezers in your toolbox just in case.
I have two regular looking Japanese saws. They are both kind of all purpose saw. I used the smaller one for detailed straight cuts like on the scroll and the bigger one for bigger straight cuts. I know that there is another Japanese double edge pull saw that allows you to do both rip cut and cross cut. I haven't tried that yet, but it is in my cart already. I will also put it down below so you can check it out too. You will also need a big bow saw to cut freestyling curves like the outline of the violin body and the scroll. The strange saw I am using is made of bamboo, it's very old school, but any kind of bow saw will do. Just make sure the throw is deep enough. And a copping saw also with deep throw that acts as a smaller bow saw for detailed curvy cuts on the apples. I have two wraps, one big, one small, both are for making the rough outlines, get a big one if you can only get one. And a big file with a round surface on one side and a flat surface on the other side. It would be best if you can get one with fine grains and a diminishing tip. Also get a set of small files with again flat and round surfaces, although you are not going to use all of them on the violin, but some of them could come in very handy. And you will also need one mouse tail file for setups. You will need a block plane. It is one of the most primary tools in file making. They come with different weight and angles. Heavy ones are good for planing the ribs, but bad for your hands. If you are very passionate about making and planning to do it 24-7 for the rest of your life, I recommend you to get a lighter one. For the angles, I like high angle ones more, but they both are fine. And it will also be good if you can find one with an adjustable blade. I also have a small block plane that I use only when making the heel. It makes the step easier, but it's optional. In addition, if you are planning to do any kind of woodworking in the future and wanted to buy the big plane, I recommend you to have the number 5 one, also known as the jack plane. But you will only need it here when joining the body planes together, which can easily be done with a small block plane. The primary one, I mean, not the small, small, optional one. I have more than a set of chisels, but you will only need two chisels for making a violin if you're looking for a minimal set. I use a chisel with a width of 20mm as an all-around chisel that will do 90% of the work I need to do on the violin with a chisel, and a narrower one with a width of 6mm that you will need it when making the pack box. I have another chisel that is 10mm wide that I use also on the pack box and a 25mm one for piling out the ribs only because I want to keep my all around chisel in a good shape. But these two are optional. And if you have a big enough desire and budget to have a set, you are very welcome to do so. Because who doesn't love to have a set? You will also need two very, very narrow chisels to work on the lining channels and the purfling channels. Sometimes you will have to thin them down a bit with a grinder if they are too thick. Or you can just make your own from blanks with your own design, just like how I do it. You will need a number of gouges with different width and curves. Most of them got numbers on. Usually the number on the left is the curviness. Smaller number, flatter curve. Larger number, rounder curves. And the number on the right is the width of the gouge. I've tried my very best to make my gouges into a minimal set. I will just put what I use and where I use them in the description below so you can design what to buy. You will need at least two knives and there is a big chance that you will have to modify them a little after you bought them. I have a few knives that I made inspired by my Sifu Michael Darnton. They all serve different purpose and I'll make a video later to show you how to make them. You will need a regular cutter or this kind of knives with sharp and replaceable blades. I prefer Japanese because their tools are simply awesome. And I put cutter here along with other weapons is because I want to make sure you know that cutters are one of the most dangerous tools in this tool list. One of the big reasons why they're danger is because you can easily find it in school kids pencil case so you won't label it as danger. And that small thought already make it more dangerous. You will need some scrapers. I make my scrapers out from some stainless steel sheets. You can do the same or you can buy those that are made for guitar making, but you will have to modify them a bit to produce better results anyway. You will need a small mirror for the purfling and a slightly bigger one for pounding out the ribs. You can buy these carving knife sets easily in bookstore or supermarket. They are sharp and small and most importantly, inexpensive. They can sometimes help you a lot in unexpected places, but they are optional. 
A wheel marking gauge can help you be more consistent on your plate thickness and save you a lot of time. And you will also need a more narrow pointed marking gauge such as a divider caliber to locate your perf links. I have mine with one of his leg cut off to be my marker and that should be the way how Stradivari did it. And of course you can buy the Valley Maker's perf link marker but they will cost you at least 3 times the price. Well, I don't know if hand drills are hand tools or power tools, and I'll just put it here. You will need it when making the pack box, the F holes, and the end button. You will also need a 1 or 1.5mm regular drill bit, and a bread point drill bit with 5.5mm, and another one with 8.5mm. The hand drill is actually more useful inside the workshop than on the violins, and besides setting up the workshop, I often use it to grind my coffee beans. But let's keep it as a secret for now. You will need sandpapers with 220, 400, 600, and 1200 grit and steel wool as starters. Try and fill this grit first, then you can adjust the grit with your own preference. You will need plastic tapes for your form and when making the ribs and masking tapes to mask your violin when working on the varnish and setups, and also for indicating things such as what's in the box or what's in the bottle. The glue we use in violin making is called high glue, which comes from the skins and tissues of different kinds of animals. It was a very common glue to use before the 20th century, and it probably is one of the most primitive glue on earth. And you will need a glue pot for cooking the glue. I use a mini cooker for that because I just happen to have one. I planned to buy a glue pot if this one goes down, but feels like it's going to live forever. And you will also need a glass container, a coffee thermometer, at least three different sizes of paint brushes, a platter, and a needle for playing with the glue. You will need some tight bond and super glue. Stradivari did not use this glue for sure, but it is very convenient and sometimes could even save your day, especially the days you make your first violin. Additionally, you will need some hand cream to take good care of your hands. Applying hand cream on your hands and do some massaging and stretching for them after every making sections would be a very good habit for you to develop. You'll need a set of finger planes. They are one of the most essential tools in violin making. If you're looking for a minimal set, get four to five round bottom ones with different sizes and one with a flat bottom for the bass bar. It's a joint using them and they will force you to understand what wood grains are and learn how to work with the flow. You'll need a bending iron and a strap. There are different sizes of bending irons for different jobs. If you can only get one, get the cello one, because you can make violins with the cello one, but cannot make cellos with the violin one. Also, the cello one look way cooler on camera. And for the strap, you can simply buy and cut out a thin piece of brass or stainless steel, or even use a leather strap, like your bell. You will need a cradle for your instrument to rest on. I bought mine, I know some people make their own, and I also know some people only use a towel for that. And I've opened some space in the middle there so I can put the instrument upside down sometimes when I need it, but you don't have to follow that. And also, I like to put this anti-slip dashboard mat underneath the cradle to help grasp better when needed. You will need a set of body claims for joining the violin body together. You can actually make them by yourself, but of course, they are not going to look like this. You will need a bass bar frame for making the bass bar. I bought mine, and I think you can actually make your own with hardwood if you want to save some money, because it's just a frame with a violin shape. You will also need a fingerboard holder to hold your fingerboard. This thing is called a graduation punch or a graduation chapa. Stradivari use this, but it's totally optional. Also, it won't be easy for you to find one and buy. If you want one, there are 99.9% .9 chances that you will have to make it. If you want to know more about it, comment below and let me know. Maybe I can make a video on that later. And this is called Saconic Compass. I made mine with just three pieces of wood. It's a caliper that can hold a pencil on the top and an adjustable screw underneath. You'll need it when working on the arching, but one thing very important you should know is that Stradivari did not use the Saconic Compass, because Saconic didn't even exist when Stradivari made his first violin. 
but it is a very good tool to use and you will understand it along the way. You will also need tools for setups, including the rimmer, the pack sharpener, parchment for the bridge, samples holder and saddler, a dentist mirror, and a gauge. And also the tools for sharpening, I will cover them again in details when we talk about setups and sharpening correspondingly. Most professional makers use a bandsaw and a drill press. I don't have a bandsaw because of the limiting space I have in my workshop. If you're facing the same problem, this Dremel MS2001 motor saw or even a jigsaw can help a lot. And also, you can actually use the motor saw as your copying saw for the F-holes. A drill press can come in very handy when drilling the back holes. And when making the edge thickness with the steel Mac safety planer, if you're doing that, you will also have to get a taper gauge for the step. A small electric grinder with not too much horsepower can be very useful if you want to modify or even make your own tools. The Fordham SR flex shelf rotary tool with a foot pedal can help making the perfling channel a lot easier. If you're using it, you'll have to make a router guide for the handpiece. I made mine with my Sifu Michael Darnan's design, and I will make a video later to show you how it's done. Also, you will need a two flute miniature square end mill with 1.2 millimeters, and I would buy more than one piece of it for more continues. I did use the Dremel before, and it's quite hard to make the router guide by yourself. And so, you will have to find and buy one from some unusual sources. And from my experience, there are chances that the screw gauge of the router guide and the Dremel doesn't fit each other. And you will have to fix that problem by buying another gauge from another unusual source to trim the gauge on the Dremel to make it fit with the router guide, which is very, very troublesome. I like the Fordham so much more, besides the ease of the making of the router guy, it also gives me better controls with the foot pedal. I can start and stop whenever and wherever I want, and that is super duper important for the step. So that's it for the tool list. I've tried my best to make it as minimal as possible and hope that now you have a clearer picture on what tools you will need for making a violin at home and are able to start writing your budget plan. The budget depends on where you design to spend your money. Good quality tools really makes the difference. So if you can, don't go cheap on that. Modifying tools and making your own tools can sometimes save you a lot of money and it is something very fun to do as there are no rules. And so then, you can use those money you save to invest in good quality tools. Sounds smooth, right? So now, as you're hurrying to check out the tool list, I am going back to my cave and start editing the next part. And before you go, make sure you have like and subscribe of course, but what I want to say is, before you go, make sure to have your first aid kit with you before you work on anything, because you know, safety first. That's why I put it here. At last.